My name is Cliff Smith. I'm with the Coalition for Community Control over the Police. I'm here with the family, Takar Smith. This is Takar's mother, Alicia. His brother, Rashard. Tamika Smith. Correct, Tamika. His wife and the rest of his family. And we're here to demand justice and accountability for the brutal execution that took place at the hands of Rampart police officers of the Los Angeles Police Department not two weeks ago. And what is known is that Takar was known to the Los Angeles police to have mental health issues. It was known that he was alone in the apartment, that he was contained, and that there was nobody else in the apartment that was in any danger when the police entered and shot Takar. The police acknowledge in the video shows that they spoke with Takar for 15 minutes. There was no reason whatsoever they could not have continued engaging. They had him contained. The policy is that the police are supposed to call in mental health professionals from the SMART unit in this circumstance. But instead, the officers chose to escalate when they were supposed to de-escalate, resulting in the entirely unjustified use of lethal force and Takar's death. We want accountability and we want justice. And when we say we want justice, we want specific and concrete justice. We want criminal prosecution of these officers by the district attorney, George Gascon, who ran his campaign on the promise that he would hold police accountable for their crimes against the community. This is why Gascon was elected as the top law enforcement officer in Los Angeles County to hold the police accountable. So we're specifically demanding District Attorney Gascon prosecute these officers. The family has an immediate need and hardship for the city to provide the financial resources to cover the expenses of a proper burial for Takar. I'm speaking directly to the offices of council member Eunicius Hernandez and we're calling upon Mayor Karen Bass to take responsibility for assuring the expenses to cover the proper burial. And we must say that this brutality by the Los Angeles police is part of a pattern and practice of abuse, of brutality, of violence, and of terrorism in these communities. Just 24 hours after the police killed Takar, Los Angeles police out of Newton Station killed Oscar Leon Sanchez in almost identical circumstances, a mental health crisis where he was contained in an apartment that the police escalated and used lethal force when they were supposed to de-escalate and call in mental health professionals. The police have already supposed to have been reformed their approach to mental health crises. But instead, they resort to shooting people. We also are joined by the legal representative for Takar's family, Eric Valenzuela, out of the Galipo law firm, and he's going to address this situation. Good afternoon. Thank you first for everybody for coming. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Big louder.
First, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Right now, we're going to allow the family to say a few words, and after they've had a chance to speak, I'll be fielding some questions. So I would ask that you just allow the family to say a few words, and then we'll field questions afterwards. Thank you. First, his wife, Shamika. Yes, hi. Um, my name is Shamika, and I'm Takara's wife. And I just do want to say that my husband is a great man, and when I walked into the police station, I was seeking for help. That's why I didn't make the 911 call because I didn't want to make it seem like it was something bad because it was nothing bad. It was not a, a, a domestic dispute. That's why I walked in and I called and I wanted the police to help me and they felt and they really felt me. I never knew by going to the police that they would not help me and they just let me down. And I'm just so hurt. I don't know what to do because my husband was a great man. He just needed help. I'm only 31 years old. I, I didn't know what to do. I was looking for the officers to help me. And I just want justice for my husband. I need justice because I don't want this to ever happen to nobody else. No other no other person that need mental help. This got to stop. This got to stop. Thank you. Can you tell Good. us about, her, about him a little bit so we can get to know him and if you would come over closer? Yes, the car was a great man. He had six kids. He loved to sing. He loved to do family thing. He loved to work. He was a, a hardworking man, and he was happy. He was lovable. He was my everything. He, he he was with me since day one, since I had my kids, and he always lifted me up. He was the one that told me I'm not supposed to disrespect my mama. He told me that. Nobody else told me that. That was him. And and forever, I'm gonna always love him for that. When nobody guided me. He the only one showed me the way. I didn't know nothing. He showed me everything. I met him when I was 19. I'm 31. He showed me. He helped me. Oh, you got to so say your name. Spell your name. Except for the camera. Yes. Yes, my name is Shamika. My first name is spelled S H A M E K A. Last name Smith. S M I T H. Thank you. Yes. If I can, there's certain things because there's, yes, there's a lot of legal angles yes. to this that are not able to be addressed openly right now. No, we, we have some other family members going to speak. Then we'll, we'll, take, we'll take the questions after. No, no, you got to say it. They can get a microphone, man. We can lower that for her. Can you? Yeah, maybe let's adjust it. I'll have to bring it back up to the other people. That's fine, thank you. Sorry about your loss, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Is that low enough? I'm Takar's mother. And he needed help. He didn't need to be shot up. He just needed a help. And that's what they were supposed to come and do tear him out of there, not shooting him down like that. <laughs> His kids love him so much, and they miss him. God, God bless him. <laughs> We're going to get justice. It's all right. We're going to get justice, okay? <laughs> Can we get it back? Can we? Oh. Th thank you so much. Yeah. Um, my name is Rashard Smith. That was, that was my little brother, my one and only little brother. And he was just having some mental issues. He needed help. And seems like we called to the wrong people for help. We can't keep calling the law out to come out here and kill us like this. We not we can't keep standing for this, y'all. We gotta we gotta push the issue on prosecuting. We can't keep having the police police the police. That's, right. That's the main thing. Right. We'd never get we'd never get things done. We need a whole separate system from from the police policing the police. 
It's a lot of people out here with mental issues that don't make you a bad person. They just make you a person with just having problems mentally, right. emotionally, physically. It's just it's a whole lot going on with, with a lot of people out here in this world. And when people call for help, we're not coming. For, we're not calling for executions. But now we call them. We call. We are calling for justice. He was, he was a, a great brother, a great dad, loved his kids, loved his mom, loved me. He was a, anybody that knows the car, they love him. He was a man probably with no enemies. This is hard for me to do because that was my brother, so just, we're going to pray for you, this car, you're always going to live. Long live the car. We need justice around here. We need justice. Right. Let's get rid of these cops. That's doing our that's doing the wrong. Amen. Thank you everybody for showing up. Can you tell us a little bit about him? A little more? A little right more. Uh, he was loving. He, he always loved to go out. He always I loved to have fun. He was just shit. I'm sorry, I'm running, I'm running into blank shot, but just know that he was a great person. He was a great person. He loved to listen to music. He loved to go to the beach. <laughs> he loved to hang out with friends. Oh, man. I'm sorry, y'all, but I don't have no more to say. Thank all y'all for coming. Six children, oh, yeah, six children, six loving children. Twenty, oh, we keep in there. Like twenty-one to six. So, how Forty-six. All right, thank y'all. Spell your first and last name, sir. So my first name is R A I S C H R D Smith S M I T H. I don't, I, I, I don't want to see somebody else doing the same report about how, how, how that mentally ill kid, mother, father, son is shot down by the police again. We got to stop this stuff today. It don't make no sense, y'all. We got to come together, black, brown, whatever color you are. Mental health runs in every color. But why only blacks getting shot? It don't make no sense. Naji Ali, N-A-J-E-E, -E, Ali, A-L-I, Director of Pro Project Islamic Hope. We're here to give our condolences to the family, but we're also here to demand justice. And while we know there are multiple investigations into this tragic killing, the civil rights community of Los Angeles, we plan on monitoring this case and this situation. And that's why we're here to let the LAPD know we plan on monitoring the investigation because it's important that the police not be allowed to investigate themselves. That's like the fox asking uh, to be watched, to watch the, the hen house. Uh, so with that, uh, Mary Bass herself mentioned about her disappointment with the mental health experts not being called to hand, handle the case as well. And certainly the community feels let down by the failure of the LAPD to do the right thing. They did the wrong thing, and unfortunately, we see a family here, a mother, a wife, brothers, sisters, children, losing a loved one who still should be here today. Uh, so with that, the family also has a good GoFundMe page. Uh, so they need help and support in burying their loved one. Thank you. Briefly, I just wanted to make a couple comments. My name's Eric Valenzuela. E R I C V A L E N Z U E L A. I think in this particular case, even Chief Moore has acknowledged that the officers acted improperly. He's gone short of saying that the shooting was unreasonable, but I think even he has acknowledged that the way the officers handled this situation was inappropriate. And you don't see that in very many cases. Too many times, 
people are being killed when they're calling for help for their loved ones who suffers from mental illness. This happens time and time again. In fact, like they mentioned earlier, this isn't even the first time this has happened this year. And they've even created a specific mental health team to deal with this type of issue because it keeps reoccurring so often. And there's so many questions that are left unanswered, like why they did not contact that team in this particular incident. Shamika went out of her way to try to prevent this from happening. She walked to the police station, showed video of her husband, of him having this mental crisis. And all of that went uninvestigated because she was trying to prevent the officers from just arriving at her house, aggressive guns blazing. She tried out of her way to make this, avoid this from happening, but she still was not able to. Some of the other questions that I think need to be answered, for example, the officers, you hear them on the video say, hit them with the 40. A 40 millimeter is a less than lethal impact round. It is almost specifically designed for people to make them drop objects. If you have a less than lethal option, such as a 40 millimeter less than lethal weapon on the scene, why are they not using it before resorting to the use of deadly force? This is one of many questions we need answered. Another question I think we need answered is, the standard for police to kill someone is the individual has to pose an immediate threat of death or serious bodily injury. I emphasize the word immediate. This individual was shot while he was on his knees. He was not advancing towards anybody. And if you look at the video closely, he was not even facing in the officer's direction. He was facing towards the cabinets in the kitchen. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that if an individual is on his knees and not even facing towards the officers or advancing towards them with a knife, this is not a gun, that that individual does not pose an immediate threat of death or serious bodily injury, making this shooting unreasonable, which I think most of us could agree on when we see the video. So thank you all for coming. We will be, absolutely. And we're hoping that this will never happen to another family again. Too many times this continues to happen and happen, and we continue to fight laws. We continue to file lawsuits. We continue to try to change laws and increase the standards of policing. Not too long ago, they increased in the, in the state of California the standard for police officers when they could use deadly force, that it has to be a last resort, that there could be no other reasonable alternatives. This language was actually built into the statute to try to prevent things like this from happening, but too many times it continues as you now see. Yes, sir, on the dispatch call, we, we hear on the dispatch call, uh, you say that, you know, maybe she needs to go back to, I believe you stated the word, an institution or a mental health office, something of that nature. Was that the intended outcome of this call? What was the intended outcome? That, that the intended outcome was to get help for his mental health. She specifically told him he deals with mental health. She even named the specific types of diagnosis. and. That was the outcome, to get help for his mental illness. It wasn't to have him arrested, it wasn't to take him to jail, it was to get help for his mental illness. Is it your contention there was plenty of time to call in the mental health unit? Absolutely, as you could see from the video, they were there for over 15 minutes and there's nobody in the apartment. This is not somebody walking around in public yielding a weapon. The officers knew that this apartment was empty. She had cleared the apartment, there was no one in there, there was no children in there. And in fact, like I indicated, she tried to prevent this from happening by literally walking to the police station and showing them video instead of just calling them and saying, hey, we're having a mental illness crisis. Uh, what, but 